Lisa Chavez. And both folks are only five dollars. Only five dollars? Damn near free. Okay. Dear friends, when I tell you I'm an awful Mexican, it means I know what this looks like. I know that I'm the second lightest foundation on the pharmacy shelf, the kind of white that is blemishes mushrooming over skin, fireworking blister red like the grail for liars. I know that I'm third generation, private schools, always new clothes, Buffy and Star Wars and Lord of the Rings, and no store that will sell me an authentic cultural experience. So we laugh along to Will Ferrell in Casa de Mi Padre until one of you reminds me that my accent isn't. It means I know the Spanish for library is not libreria. They're false cognates. Two words that sound as if they should transition easily between the languages, but for whatever reason, don't. When I tell you I'm an awful Mexican, it means I'm begging you not to expect Frida Kahlo or Cesar Chavez. I am no feel-good revolution photo op, checkbox sheet, and brown for the history books. It means I know you're disappointed I don't speak better Spanish, because if I did, it would mean you have legitimately diverse friends. It means stop asking me for my opinion on Latino issues, as if my tongue would dispense indulgence and holy script, as if you could piggyback your way to righteous. Stop looking at me, expecting me to believe their mesas and mariachi, staring into my face until it becomes a mirror of your own preconceptions. Stop being so yardstick. Stop being so border patrol. Stop waiting around for me to do something ethnic. Stop being so zookeeper, measuring my skull to figure out what kind of creature I really am. When I tell you I'm an awful Mexican, it means nobody does racist shit to me based on recognizing me as Mexican. And I know I still count, but not what I count as. When order of operations will render me a clean equation, it means I know that it's messed up to wish my life had somehow been worse, so I wouldn't have to keep asking myself whether I really belong to my own family, but I don't know how to stop. When I tell you that I'm awful, terrible, no good, very bad Mexican, it means I am so afraid of failing to measure up that I put myself down before someone else can do it for me. I don't know how to be a line item for people who walk around calling themselves allies, who listen to me talk like they're trying to figure out whether I would break apart in their hands or just explode. I mean, fuck allies. You're my friend. And I cannot do this without you. Mike, it's so nice to be here. I saw some of you on Tuesday. Glad to see you again. Um, my plan for the evening was we're going to do some poems, and um, some of them are going to be about stuff that's not okay to do to women in public. Some of them are going to be funny. Some of them are probably going to be super depressing, and I'll try not to depress you too much. Bullshit. We love depression. We love depression. Or I'll try and depress you a lot, and most yeah. of them are actually not memorized, so we're going to go to And uh, and. I want to take Bruno Zach at the end of this. Okay, all right. <laughs> we'll, we'll see what happens. Um, sometimes in the morning, when I am first into the office, I flip on the coffee maker, snap in my headphones, and dance it up down the empty hall, shaking my hips and singing not quite at the top of my lungs to pretend I want to be here. This is what I've learned about the kinds of jobs they call career track. They will leave you your body. What they want is your mind. Like a lover who constantly asks, what are you thinking about? These jobs demand not just your effort, but also your enthusiasm. Give them your nine to five, your nights, your weekends, but do it with a smile. Show them your teeth. Be grateful they haven't replaced you. Remember that these days, corporations are people too. Journalists who went to better schools than I did write that my generation has no merit. We're slacktivists, hipsters with beehive beards, locavores who start rooftop dairies because all we remember from Marx is the single phrase, means of production. We are smug and well-fed and working for Facebook. They say our hypocrisy is by choice. Look, in a mining town, everyone's a miner. They don't all have an ideological allegiance to 
cold. When an angry customer approaches me convinced that the startup that hired me has single-handedly ruined his life, I want to say, hello. You've reached a poor 24-year-old who only took this job for the crap her parents and her grandparents went through would mean something. I refuse to disappoint them, but I don't give a shit. So I have to do that. Sometimes I siphon away my workday into writing poems to pretend that somehow, somewhere, my capacity for passion is valued over my facility with distorting the truth. Sometimes when I make a work-related phone call, I am very nice to the customer service representative. They always sound so surprised. I know that little doses of kindness are not radical. Just like I know that on balance, my spot in the food chain means I do more harm by existing than the good I could do by repenting. I just don't know what worthwhile revolution is currently hiring. Save you written down in advance, and I don't have that this time. Um, so that wasn't written down? No, oh, the, oh, 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 um, but if you hear anything that you like, since I thrive off audience participation, just give me some noise, and then the performance that you get back will be so much better, and our evenings will just, like, be so great. I do! I don't say anything, I'll be that much more awkward. Yeah, no, it will be, but that's okay, I'll, I'll survive. Cool. Um, when he hands me the chocolates, I say, I don't want them. Yeah! <laughs> chocolates more insistently. Four small points of love, a constellation in bright foil. What girl doesn't want a box full of stars? The star shapes we recognize are called asterisms. Easy to spot with patterns so simple that even children can identify them. He thinks the pattern is so simple to identify. He is bringing me chocolates because he is a man and I am a girl. The smile curls my fingers, hollows my palms, things drop into it. Gift. The power he'll let me touch to remind me how much it can hurt if I don't treat it nicely. He is posing me like a doll, reminding me what I owe him, of the debt that girls' hands owe to such a nice guy. Damn. What is the word no but an outlier? And what am I if not a girl, dismissible as Pluto? These are the times I have learned that no doesn't count. When I say it too softly, when I say it while smiling, when the sentence that occurs in contains a preposition, or however, but, when I'm in someone's bed, when a man decides I didn't really mean it. You say you want to give me the moon, but the moon is a cold satellite deadened by too much orbiting. You say you want to give me the stars, but all our maps of stars look like blood spatter to me. Their patterns points of transgression instead of points of light. Excuse me for my distrust of gifts that come with traps. Wrapped in the expectation I will stop being myself and start being the night sky. Constellations are so accessible. The way you can connect the dots to make whatever shape you want. What girl doesn't want to see her name in lights? What girl doesn't want to be scattered sugar across someone's dark secrets? Astrological pinups, something to set your calendars by. Constellations are beautiful, but you seem to have forgotten you only become one once you're dead. What must my life taste like in the mouths of men who insist it isn't that bad yet? Men watching my story through telescopes, a million miles away from the site of impact. Stop saying it's inevitable that men will hurt me through their refusal to believe I am more than an interchangeable bright light. Stop saying I'm as beautiful as Neptune. You have no idea how cold it gets out here. And don't forget what comes of throwing your mass around. That any star placed under sufficient pressure turns into a black hole. He thinks he is bringing me chocolates. He leaves me scraping stardust. My hands collapsed into prayers. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna we're gonna continue the uh, the gender anger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's no, no. It's syllable. I encourage everyone to try it, actually, regardless of gender. I think a lot of people up here are, are very polite. That's good, but um, this one's by request. 
When I say, what are you doing with that camera? You look at me like I am a time traveler, asking you the purpose of the mysterious light-making box in your hands, and reply, with my camera? I'm taking snapshots. I should have rephrased. I meant to say, hey, strange man with a disproportionately grainy goatee, what are you doing standing outside of Nordstrom Rack taking pictures of women with that camera, one of whom happens to be me? I ask if you think it is a good idea to take pictures of random strangers on the street without asking their permission, whereupon your mouth edges up into a pitying smirk. Well, as an artist, you say, I have a certain intention. I try to think of ways that this situation could conceivably be about art, but I keep running up against every picture that I've seen you take in our brief acquaintance is of a young woman, kind of skinny, dressed cute. I realize I have misjudged you, disproportionately graying goatee and fedora wearing man. <laughs> Artistic photographs of strange girls who weren't asked if that's what they want? Who else would have been bold enough, innovative enough to bring that perspective to modern photography? See, here's what your approach says about you, my disproportionately gray and goatee fedora wearing Chinese luck dragon tattoo, the white compatriots in artistic endeavor. You thought that my appearance in your line of sight gave you something to be proud of. Like selecting is the same thing as creating. Like your dick is some kind of celestially inspired divining rod seeking deep waters of aesthetic clarity. You thought I was at my best when purely decorative, flattened in pixels, mute as meat and butterfly pinion to a court board of your own devising. The old oracles always did speak the best through priests. See, those were metaphors. Because as an artist, I approach things with a certain intention. And frankly, my lepidopterist friend, I am fully realized in more dimensions than you can count. I assume you stop and smirk after you run out of fingers and toes, because if knowledge doesn't originate from your own sweating body, is it worth having? I assume that if a tree falls in the forest and the tree is kind of sexy, considered in the right light, it doesn't make a sound. I hope you enjoy being rendered in a medium in which you are incapable of speaking back. Who's the artist now? Great, so if you ever have occasion to go down to Seattle, that was my slam team. Uh, we went to Oakland for the very first time for nationals this year, and we placed out of 72 teams. We were number seven. Woo! The entire Pacific Northwest did really well this year, so you should all just feel good by association. Um, <laughs> that's my team. Uh, how many do I have? I have like a couple more. Okay, I won't, probably won't go that long. Um, <laughs> Pulling them out of hats, 
broadcasting gestures for shadow puppet men. I have kissed so many girls the only way I knew how, in public. It's okay, we're all a little drunk. It'll make him jealous. I triple dare you. I really think it's what my character would do in this scene. All I need is an audience to turn something into a performance. People say bisexuals try to have their cake and eat it too, which I guess means we're meant to work miracles. And the more modest form of a miracle is a mirage. A mirage is sleight of hand. The slights I can cause with my hands, tilting the Kinsey scale in my favor. Maybe there's a reason the only poetry of Sappho's we have is in fragments. If you refuse to lay your cards down, then no one can take them from you. If you are an apple that no one can reach, There'll be no one to break through red skin with their teeth. I know I'm lying to half of you, experimenting on the other half. But I've been playing this shell game for so long, I don't remember which half is which. Bisexual means always lying to someone, sometimes yourself. So here's the girls kissing girls, hiding in plain sight. My lovely assistants, I'm sorry. I don't remember how the trick is supposed to end. 